Let's bring in Jason Longshore, the analyst for Atlanta United. Um, Jason, that moment, and we've had a lot of them, okay? But to start the season with us not really knowing a whole lot about what this club's going to look like and where we might go, I got to tell you, man, it gave me chills. Two of the best goals I've ever seen live in my life. Um, when you combine the quality of them, the moment, you know, what it meant, where it happens in the match, you know, part of the season, all that stuff, like two of the best goals I have ever seen live. Um, just an amazing moment. I mean, I, I about fell out of my chair on the first one. Mm. Uh, I did not see, I, I saw that building up on the corner. I saw that they weren't looking at Almada. Okay, he's going to have a shot from distance. Mm. All right, let's see if, if this can develop the way I think it might. And then that shot is as good as you'll find anywhere in the world. And then the free kick where you know who's going to take it. You know what he's going for. And a, a really underrated element of it that I do think had a little bit of an effect, if you go back and watch the free kick, as San Jose setting up, Brooks Lennon makes a run down the right side. There's no one over there. And at first, he's wide open. They could play him in. He would be into the 18 running a goal. Now, San Jose spotted it, and a defender was going to, it looked like, either probably lay behind the wall or maybe come over on that side. Hmm. He has to run over, deal with Brooks. Players are rearranging. It's just that little bit of, of something to throw you off. And Almada hits a, a world-class free kick to win it. Unbelievable. I'm just watching the replay as you're describing it, Jason. And uh, for guys who don't follow soccer, the phrase would be bend it like Beckham. One of those moments that we see so often in soccer, but you don't get that. You just don't get that service. And that was unbelievable. So what happened in the first 90 minutes? Because <laughs> it looked like uh, it was going to be a one-way show. Yeah, I mean, look, this is something that is not new in the sense that if you concede a goal early, against a team who I was a little surprised they were this willing to do it, but against a team that is willing to, as the minutes tick away, sit deeper and deeper and clog up space, well, this is what happens. You know, I, I think this is whether, I mean, how many times did we see Barcelona go through this? Right. How many times, you know, Mike, have you seen Chelsea go yeah. through this? Where yeah. if you concede early, it gets very difficult. And, and that's why, you know, giving up the goal when it happened the way it does it makes the game difficult. I think if if we were having this conversation about a team that you fall behind and then there's no fight, you don't have any shots, you're not getting into the attacking third, everything looks discombobulated, we're having a different conversation about what happened Saturday night. But that's not what happened. The team pushed forward and pushed forward and pushed forward. Now, there was a time frame in the second half, and I'd like to, I'm going to go back and look at this and I'll try to mention it a little more detail on Atlanta soccer tonight, this evening. But there was a time frame in the second half where I did think that they started pressing a bit, forcing shots from longer range. I thought they rushed a couple. I thought they didn't wait for the play to develop because you've been banging on the door for so long. But they found a way to get it done in a difficult situation. Any team falls behind when they did – very difficult to rescue a result, let alone three points. So what's this going to look like when Yorgos is available? What's this going to look like from an attacking standpoint? And it's not just Yorgos either. It's Derek Etienne. And I thought Caleb Wiley was really good in the first half. Wiley and Etienne are, are very different kinds of players. I think both will have an effect on that left side, like this week especially. Might be a little bit of a 50-50 between the two of them. What you're going to see with Yakimakis in this team, as opposed to Conway and Miguel Berry, who came on for him in the second half, you're going to see, one, they're going to feed that player more. Yakimakis is going to get more touches inside the 18. If I'm not mistaken, there were only two touches from the forward inside the 18-yard box in the match. And, look, some of that's down to the movement from Conway and Barry. Some of that's down to if it's Yakimakis there, maybe you force the ball into that position. Maybe you take a lower percentage pass to try to get the ball into that guy. I think Yakimakis' presence is going to open up more space for others and also get more touches inside that 18-yard box.